Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays, The Binding of Isaac, Afterbirth, plus we had a good run, great run last time if I remember correctly, which I probably don't. Uh, ZQ, XG, 4G, 2, 4, what did I hit on my keyboard there that made that go away? Like, left control? I don't know, that was weird. Um, we get Blood Clots and the Prayer Card, which looks like a weird can of spinach or something. But, on the bright side, don't pop the world card. On the bright side, uh, Blood Clot is one of those items I apparently underrate all the time. And the actual, like, clotted tier is pretty good. Which was a very gross way to explain what that tier is called. We've got a pretty bad rate of fire. Our damage stat is not particularly strong. Um... But if the if the clotted tier, yes, I'm going to keep calling it that. Thank you for asking. Uh, if the clotted tier actually gives you like double damage, that means we have a seven damage tier every other shot, which is actually very very useful. Scorpio's Dece. People still say Dece, probably. You guys ever played Dece? Probably not. It seems like a very Canadian thing. Are you talking about dice? It sounds like you're trying to say dice. No, Dece was. A game we played in French class, where, and there's probably other names for it, but um, you take turns saying numbers in a circle, so you get like, you know, your your whole class around, and then somebody you can say one or two numbers, and the goal is to not say the tenth number, aka you know, dies. It was to get you to memorize the numbers un through dies. I don't know if we want to use this yet because we're going to mature into another heart on the next floor anyway. We'd rather have uh, the chance to get three plays on the next floor, I think, of, of prayer cards so we can get one extra HP out of it. But I will go back and go to the curse room. So, you know, basically, I, I'm pretty sure there's like a, there's a rule set that you can derive that's very easy. Like, you want to always give yourself the best chance uh, of having the person before you say seven or something like that. Because if you say seven, you can always fuck the person... That's after you. Sorry, if they say seven, you can always fuck the person that's after you. Sometimes you may find yourself being thrown on the mercy of the court. That's where the whole diplomacy comes. It's a good game, actually. I mean, it's a fun little game for kids. And I'm not a kid. I only play cool games like Twilight Struggle and Diplomacy. Anyway. Um, well, now we should actually do this. Because we'll get... 2 HP, Poison Ragman, or sorry, Champion Ragman who was being poisoned is pretty annoying, but the good news is the head should like always get poisoned on the first shot that I hit it with, so most of the time it's probably going to get taken care of right away. So this is actually a situation in which Scorpio is actually very, very good, um, but Champion Ragman's, you know, still extremely annoying. He's now dead though, so... You know, it's hard to be that annoying when you're dead. And Toothpicks actually is a huge help for us. Our rate of fire improved drastically. Wouldn't say that we necessarily have the win uh, immediately. But I would say that we're, you know, closing in on it. So why use the world card? Uh, first off, what a room. <laughs> Using the world card made it less likely that I would go to this room. But I'm glad I did because, I mean, it's just weird. The item is not that amazing, but it's, it's alright. Um... And I guess the joke's on me. Because of my HP, I can't actually go to the boss trap room. Took some dumb damage. I'm really trying to play better. It's, I think, since Afterworth Plus has come out, I've played some of the best Isaac I've ever played. And at least, especially in terms of dailies, I've played really, really well on dailies. In a, in a way that actually makes me, like, feel encouraged, you know? It's... Just be careful here. It's nice! And I, I mean that with uh, a little shred of, you know, tooting my own horn, obviously. Almost didn't see the Tinted Rock in there. But, since being back, um, I farted up a couple of dailies and... I mean, the the other run that probably went up yesterday was not so bad, I think. But if I farted up a couple of dailies, I wouldn't dispute that. Um, we can do something with this HP, so let's throw this down here. And, you know, it's easy to blame it on jet lag, but... Uh, I'm not really that jet lagged. And to manufacture jet lag as an excuse when it doesn't exist is just a little bit pathetic. But, um, yeah, you know, you gotta take some personal responsibility and just say, you know, nobody really cares why you're doing badly, just do better, you know? 
why I'm doing badly. Just do better. Maybe they care why you're doing badly. Like, if you got a genuine reason. Oh my god. I'm actually... I shouldn't be too worried about death, because we've got blood bag waiting for us on the outside, but... Pin? Yeah. I'm just surprised at how many hits those freaking turtlings took before they died. Especially considering there were three of them. But our deal with the double chance is still super high. So yeah, we're getting some momentum. It's all about building good habits again. Now our speed is actually at a, a decent level. You know, when you don't play the game for a while, it's it's easy to fade off. Look at famous Japanese figure skater Mao Asada. You know, after the 2014 Olympics in Sochi, she took some time off because she didn't perform up to her standards. Hard to come back from that, especially once you reach, you know, the age, your brain starts getting a little bit less plastic. You know, it's harder to relearn those those skills and patterns that previously had come very easy to you. Oh, I mean, we have to. And with prayer card, that basically means, like, prayer card, car battery means we win. As far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, I would love to be able to get the wafer as well. Um, but we essentially are unstoppable. Every battery charge, or every six rooms, we get an HP upgrade. Technically, if this happened late in the game... I don't think it's that much better than just having Book of, uh, uh, or the Satanic Bible or Book of Revelations. But when it happens in the early game, we're, like, almost actually unstoppable. Because we're gonna be able to leverage all of this HP for so many different things. We can play Blood Banks, you know. You, blood Banks are gonna give us Blood Bags, or they're gonna give us a lot of money. The Blood Bags give us speed upgrades. I didn't say health upgrades, because we don't really care about, uh, health. We're gonna hit 12 health pretty easily and pretty consistently, I think. Um, if we get money, we use the money to buy things from the shop. That gives us, you know, damage, utility, doubled consumables, etc., etc. Or maybe even chaos, free shop items. Cheap shop items, you get the idea. Basically, there's way too much leverage that we can glean from this uh, to think that we have a good chance of dying. But if we're gonna die, it's either... I would say it's most likely to happen uh, either in, like, the next couple of floors or at the end of the game. I think within a, a floor or two, we're probably going to start I mean, Lump of Coal is great here. And I don't think we are going to die, but um, within the next floor or two, we're going to kind of hit enough HP that it's inconceivable that we'll die. Especially if we get, um, if we get, uh, what am I trying to say here? Can we get much higher? No, I'm trying to say, um, especially if we get like a, a trinket that works for our purposes, like Bloody Penny, for example, but... Why can we lose in the late game then? Well, because in a, in a stroke of genius design, and I'm not even saying this sarcastically, um, this is actually smart design to keep things, you know, tense, as opposed to in Vanilla Isaac. I don't know, it's been a long time since I played Vanilla Isaac, and other people might have forgotten this, but uh, Vanilla Isaac used to not have an HP cap, if you recall. People were really mad at first, if, if memory serves, when this decision was made, but... Um, when the decision was made to reverse this, I should say. So, previously there was no HP cap, and instead the way that things worked was it only showed 12 HP on the screen, and then every HP or spirit heart, etc. that you got over that just appeared off the screen but still existed. Or, I mean, appeared off the screen is kind of a weird sentence to say. I mean, existed in code, but probably was not actually output to the screen because there was no space is a better way to describe it, maybe, but... Um, when they changed that, it changed a lot of things. It made it so some... I mean, the f part of it is Flash Isaac was also a little bit harder in many ways, I think. So, um, it was conceivable that sometimes you would need that HP to survive. I don't know if we have a second Spirit Heart yet, so I'm, I don't really want to go to the Curse Room just yet. Uh, now, 12 is usually enough. In fact, you find yourself oftentimes deliberately giving up a lot of your HP in order to pick up more damage, which is also, you know, another strategy. Um, wait, where was this all going? I can't remember, actually, at this point, but... Oh, yeah, no, no, no. The, the, the Stroke of Genius design means that there's actually a chance we die in the late game, because 12 HP on the Depths 2 is 24 hits without picking up any HP. Um, whereas, on the Womb, it's only 12, so... It's not necessarily likely, but it is plausible that that could happen. Although, it, it probably will not. <laughs> I hope it will not, anyway. For now, we don't really need to worry about that. What's on the to-do list? There's really not much on the to-do list. 
for now. Um, we'll probably pop the world card just to see, and it totally worked, if our uh, self-sacrifice room, or sorry, our, our curse room is adjacent to a secret room, which it is. So I shouldn't have used a bomb, in fact, especially immediately after my plan working, that was the wrong time to use a bomb. But I was getting a little annoyed here. It's like my... The one thing that's fragile about this run right now is that we are getting a little bit later into the game. Um, or, well, let's not go crazy here. We're getting further into the game, and yet still, uh, no damage upgrades. So we really, really want to maximize these devil chances because uh, at the present moment, 3.37 damage is not very good. Sure, we have Lump of Coal. That's helping out a lot. I mean, we're not actually beating Mega Fatty slowly. We're actually killing him at a at a pace that I would consider pretty good. Um, and we do have an 8 rate of fire as well, which is above average. But all that just goes to show you, like, it would be awesome to get more damage because we already got some sort of unlikely things that are helping to mitigate the fact that our damage sort of sucks right now. And we got to deal with the Angel instead. Super Bandage at least gives us Spirit Hearts, and you know what? I think we... Oh, we're at full HP. Um, we'll just walk into the Curse Room at this point, and, and I'll save my bombs to be able to blow up Angel Statues. Maybe this is our Godhead run. Maybe we're going to be rewarded for our piety. I was going to say piousness. What an idiot! He doesn't even know how to conjugate an Old English word properly. It's piety. Didn't you play Crusader Kings? Actually, I did play Crusader Kings, too. It's... Probably one of my uh, most played games in Steam history with like 500 or 600 hours. How are you so bad at it? It's hard. It's a hard game, man. You don't understand, especially as a North American. There's like a built-in amount of difficulty in Crusader Kings 2. First off, I had to learn where all the duchies were. I had to learn what a duke was. We'll just pick that up. I don't know if it was worth it, but we'll do it anyway. I don't know, like, if, if people from other countries know this, but we're not really taught that. I mean, we know what a king is, but we're not taught, taught that much about, like, medieval politics and structure. Like, if you had asked me in the year 2009, so I was, like, 21 years old, 20, you know, I was in that range at least, um, what a duke rules. I'd be like, I don't know, land? A town? No, a duke rules a duchy. It sounds so obvious when you know... I didn't know what a duchy was, or a, a, a fiefdom, or a, you know, a, you know, what is a thane rule? What is a jarl rule? What's the difference between a, a king and a petty king? Well, you know, at some point, I guess the concept of a kingdom is a little bit, you know, if, if, you're not, if you don't have anyone over top of you except an emperor, I guess you're a king, but you get the idea. Um, so you gotta learn all that. It's also fair to say that, as a North American, knowledge of European geography, not that good. Probably only like 50% of people in North America could pinpoint France on a map. And I'm not being facetious. And it's sad. And I know you're watching this and you're saying, no, everybody could pinpoint France on the map. Well, I'm talking about a map that doesn't have the word France over top of France, for one. And then also, of course, you guys know, because you're very smart people, as evidenced by the fact that you're watching this video. Do I have a vested interest in making you think that you're a smart person for watching my content? No, that's ridiculous. Um, we will pop that. And that. But, um, I, I think that's true. I think that the average North American could probably name... The median North American, when it comes to, like, geography, could... I'm not saying North Americans are stupid, we're, you know... Hey, how do you guys feel about, you know, the fucking Battle of the Plains of Abraham? Uh, uh, the what? Exactly. General Wolf, motherfucker. General James Wolf and General Louis Montcalm. Anyway, it's probably not pronounced that well, but you get the idea, okay? You know, we all, we all have our own specific skill sets. I think the median North American could probably successfully name, like, five or six European countries on the map. England is pretty easy. Italy is the one that everybody's going to get. Everybody's going to get Italy. Because it's shaped like a boot. We're taught that from an early age. The second country that half of people will say is going to be Sicily, because you remember that that comes off of the boot. I don't know if Sicily is its own country. I'm not trying to offend anybody. It might be a, you know, independently administrated territory, you get the idea. After that, 
Greenland. And then you got to be like, nah, Greenland's not, it's not its own country from an administrative sense. It's ruled by Denmark. Like, okay, well, fine. Fucking uh, Russia. All right. Technically in Europe, I suppose. They do play in the Euros, which is, I believe, how the UN <laughs> figures out who should be on the Security Council. Um, and then I think you get into like France, Spain, possibly Germany. And then after that, I think people are largely adrift. Well, if you get the if you get England, you'll probably get Scotland or Ireland. But then you're like, honestly, it's probably in your best interest to just stay away from those because it gets confusing in that area. I'm not trying to offend you, but then you go, okay, like, all right, that's England, that's Scotland, and then you're like, are you forgetting something? You're like, okay, right, okay, that's Wales. I'm not trying to offend you, Wales. Just sometimes you're kind of like, you're not divided by like a lake or something or an ocean. You know, you're just sort of like we're this part, okay. And then you go, okay, and that's Ireland. They go, oh, well, well, what about Northern Ireland? You're like, okay, Northern Ireland there. You got to remember which one's part of the UK, which one's not. And it's, for you, it's easy because you live there and you're going, you're being ignorant right now. But you got to understand it's confusing, you know? When you come from North America, it's just like, at least, you, the, the other thing is North Americans also don't understand North American geography. The average North American, this is no joke, I'm not, I'm not turning up my, I, let me just phrase it in this way instead. I am also an idiot. Have you ever seen me try to like do a puzzle in a video game? I don't possess that skill set. I'm learning, but it's, it's hard to figure out, you know, it's a step-by-step -step process to fill in those gaps. But I'm, I'm being honest with you, the average North American thinks that there's three countries in North America. Canada, the United States, and Mexico. And then, you go, okay, well what about, you know, Cuba? They go, that's in Central America. Central America is a part of North America. Central America is not a continent. I don't know what the difference is, to be honest with you. Uh, this bomb will not work. I think. I don't, I don't know, but the, you know, the Continent Creation Committee decided Central America is going to be a part of North America. There's actually like 30 countries in North America. You've got, you know, Barbados, the Bahamas, Cuba. Ooh, I wanna take you to Antigua, Nicaragua. Ooh, my baby mama. Costa Rica, Panama. Baby, why don't we go to the, the geography class? We'll get there fast and then we'll... Wait, wait, wait. Think about it, think about it. Mm, think about it, think about it. Um, I can't think of a country that ends in... Oh! Oh! There we go. We'll get there fast and look at Borneo. Look at the state lines of Ohio. You get the idea. We done geography class. It doesn't really rhyme at the end, but. Uh, will this fill up a red heart? Oh, you moron, man. Just cost yourself a deal with the devil chance there. But yeah, every six rooms we do get uh, a bunch of, well, we get one extra red heart. I didn't even think about that. By the way, this run is fine, but I'm also losing my mind because of the fact that we still have 3.37 fucking damage. Now, sure, you know, what did I say two floors ago? We got Lump of Coal. It's doing work to some extent. We got uh, Blood Clot sort of helping out a little now and then, but starting to get past the point where that's enough. If it was ever enough. 3.37 base damage is just a stat that will not carry us that far. Especially if we can't get deals with the devil. Now, the problem is that I've created that hell of my own existence because of Curse of the Unknown. Uh, I didn't realize we were so close to the cap. Now, I've made it impossible for me to take Spirit Hearts without getting a deal with the devil. Or Potato Peeler in the first place. So, I'm going to pop this and then see what we get here. Ace of Clubs. Ooh, be careful. I mean, Ace of Clubs is not great, but there's there's a chance we could use it for good effect here. Or too good effect, I should say. At this point, what do I care if we get hit? Especially with the IV bag. We can create our own HP on the regular. Please. I'm begging you. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Four of them? That's too many. Well, um... 
Despite the fact that I'm not thrilled about our damage, there's still no. Oh, I mean, we've gotten deals with the angel. Now that what am I talking about? I I forgot. I'm like, why why am I not getting deals with the devil? Well, because you got two deals with the angel. And what did they give you? Well, they mostly sucked, but Nun's Habit is okay. Um, so we got a 9% chance of a deal and a 71% chance of it being a deal with the Angel. That makes sense. That, that math adds up. We've been hit and lost Red Heart, so we have a 75% reduced chance. Plus, we have another 75% reduced chance because of the fact that uh, we got one on the last two floors. Something like that. The math, uh, back of the napkin calculation seems to work out. Okay, our luck and range stat go up, but we're still completely bereft of damage upgrades. This has been happening um, seemingly more often lately. And I am hesitant to, like, suggest that there's been a change to the game. I understand that, you know, two runs a day is not necessarily a large sample size, but two runs a day for five years is kind of a larger sample size. Um, and I'm starting to feel like maybe the parameters have been changed. If, if I'm not just getting unlucky, that is. Um, maybe they messed with the numbers or something here, because damage upgrades have seemed a little less likely to be uh, present lately and or accounted for. You guys ever... <laughs> Here's a real question for you. It's like a one-sided NLSS right now. Teachers taking roll call. They say your name. What do you say? You say here? Do you say present? Do you say present and accounted for? If so, please stop. Everybody talks about you behind your back. Um, they say, look at that nerd. Present and accounted for. What are you talking about? It doesn't make any sense. It's not 1920. Um, or do you just put up your hand? Or are you the really cool guy doesn't even put up his whole hand, just puts up like a couple of fingers. And he's like, yeah, I'm here. Of course I'm here. Oh, you don't know Carlo? Just the baddest kid in seventh grade. He beat Diablo 2 uh, doing no meph runs on Bnet. Hardcore. How do you beat Diablo 2 without killing Mephisto? It's a good point. I think it's a lie, honestly. I don't, never trusted that kid, honestly. Anarchist Cookbook. All right, that's a good one. That's where I wanna look. Anarchist Cookbook. When you, when you press the space bar, your screen fills up so far with explosives that hurt you. Maybe if you're lucky, they will hurt the enemies. And you're gonna open up the secret room. We'll get there fast and look at Borneo. Okay, you get the idea. You get the joke. It folds in in itself. Some Miranese knot. Please, it's a Miranese knot. Get out of here, buddy. I'm talking to myself. No, I'm talking to my bad damage. Like, get out of here, buddy. Get out of my dreams, get into my car, and give me, like, some good damage while you're at it. Because this is getting ridiculous. Fudge, though. Okay, so we're at a 42% deal with the Devil Chance, roughly. And a... I guess at that point, like, a 21% chance. No, 25% chance-ish of getting a deal with the Devil. Again, these numbers are not perfect. They're just approximations that help me figure out what we should be planning for. But the important thing is that um, we, ha in order to give ourselves those odds, which of course still do come with like a 30% chance we don't make the deal with the devil. Um, or a deal with anything, I should say. We need to not get hit. And we really like actually need to not get hit. We can't take a hit. And absorb it in like a, a spirit heart or something. Because we have no spirit hearts. Why blow up the tinted rock then? It's kind of hoping for small rock. Like a single damage upgrade at some point in my adult life. Oh, that was extremely close. Okay, we're halfway through. We've weathered some 
Tough spawns. Oh, you fucking dick. Well, the mom fight is just a pain in the ass with no HP, man. Or sorry, no damage. Like, every time a minion spawns, we gotta turn our attention to the minion. Now we've got a, uh, about a 0 0.35 chance, aka like a 4 in 1,000 shot of getting a deal with the angel, and then a 4 in 1,000 shot of getting a deal with the devil. Well, no, it's like a 2 in 1,000 shot of getting a deal with the devil and, and angel. Anyway, disregard, 2.5. See, I say disregard, but in my head, I'm like, I gotta get that calculation right. I mean, when we were... Yeah, that's... I mean, it's fair. When we were in Japan, we did another escape room. That's my, like... I was talking about puzzle solving. That's my talent. In, in, in escape rooms. Like, if we were assembling, like, an Ocean's Eleven-style crew, they'd be like, hey, there's Mickey. He does the driving. There's Darius. Darius is the greatest hacker the world has ever seen. Oh, this is Jerome. He's the greatest gunman in the, you know, southwest portion of the United States of America. And there's Ryan. He's pretty good at multiplying two-digit numbers in his head as long as you, you know, get out of his face so he doesn't feel so much pressure. You know, that's my skill that I bring to the table. And I know who, well, at least, you know, I've only done two escape rooms. But every escape room that I've ever been to has like a few different elements that are present in it. There's usually like, you know, some visual aspect. There's some like non-lateral thing, or sorry, a lateral thinking puzzle where like you gotta take information from one area and apply it elsewhere from the information source that you got it from. Like you get information on, you know, in the, in the kitchen and you gotta apply it in an upstairs bedroom or something like that. That's more like an escape house, but you get the idea. And then there's, there's usually, like, a middle school difficulty math question in there. And everybody that I've ever done escape rooms with is like, Oh, I don't want to do that. They don't understand. That's the easiest part. But as long as they don't understand it, I will always have a job at the escape room. I just kind of sit back. I organize information. I go, hey, why don't we, you know, I'll, I'll write down the possible combinations that we think about this, you know, this lock could be on this piece of paper. And then, you know, if you ever want to refer back to it, there it is. And then people later go, thanks for writing that down. I was in the moment I wasn't thinking about it. We would have lost some of our progress. That's no problem. That's very sensible. It's the least I could do. Somebody's got to organize the information. Apart from that, I'd mostly just hang back. And then somebody goes, wait a minute, you know, What's 4 times 60 times 60? And I'm like, I'm on it. Don't sweat it. And they think... There goes our deal chance again. They think that I'm a relatively intelligent individual for doing it. But it's... I mean, you're going to be like, why don't you just take your phone? You can't take your phone into the escape room, you savage. Where's the fun in that? Anyway. Escape rooms are fun, man. Expensive? Like, considering what, you, what you're getting, but... Very fun. I, it's probably gonna be a fad. <laughs> it's definitely like, it's one of those things that I could picture in like 20 years when people look back on the, you know, mid 2010s. They're gonna be like, we were always doing like escape rooms. Whenever somebody turned 24, we were doing escape rooms. That was weird. It's, it's cool though. It's a good bonding experience. I, you know what I would love to see is actually like live footage like a Twitch channel that broadcasts people doing escape rooms. Just because I bet, if you've never done an escape room, you know, it's basically a series of puzzles that are timed. There's a time limit, and if you succeed or you fail, you don't really get anything except gratification, but, you know, maybe you get your picture up on the wall or something. But, um, I, every time I've done it, I've done it with a team where we have a mutual level of respect for each other. You know, we go, hey, you're really good at this. You did a great job there. Wow, I never would have thought about this. And if you get stuck, you just communicate and work it out. You know, you don't get too proud about it. Um, and you, you try other things. You don't you don't say that anybody's idea is stupid or something like that. But I bet now and then you get just the most hilarious possible groups that come into escape rooms. Like, you know, our boss said we had to be here for team building. I got put on a group with... Jennifer from HR and I fucking hate her, you know, and then Jennifer from HR is like, what if we try our birthdays on the lock? And you're just like, Jennifer, how would they know what our birthdays are? Well, I don't know. It's just a thought. You didn't have to get mad at me. And she's right. I mean, she's wrong about the puzzle. It is a stupid idea, but she's right that you don't have to get mad at her. Your madness 
is also going to hinder your chances of completing the escape room. Which is why I think it would make for amazing reality TV, because it forces people to work together. And also makes them feel bad about themselves if they lose, which is why it's valuable. Dude, this is a this is actually not quite a train wreck run, because we're, we're doing alright, but the damage is so bad. I'm, I'm losing it here. Um... 3.37 damage from the first floor onwards. So yeah, there's... I mean, you would never get people to sign off on it unless you gave them, like, a huge discount or didn't tell them. Not that I'm advocating that, but... I'm just saying. I love... watching... I mean, this is a terrible thing to say. But I like watching dysfunctional human relationships. And I think that... That's a very human thing. Like, I don't, obviously, if it's like, you know, parents fighting and their child is like crying on the staircase, like, you know, what happened to my family, that's the saddest thing in the world. However, I think that's part of the appeal of something like The Office, you know, is that, especially early on in that show, it was a bunch of people who had, like, they had to work together, but a lot of them didn't really like each other. Like, Michael Scott's relationship with Jan was like the most dysfunctional made for some of the best episodes of that show also some of the hardest to watch just from a you know cringing perspective but um anyway I forgot what I was saying the point is that's a it's not a million dollar idea that's like a you know three hundred dollars a month idea but it would still be fun I especially if you knew the solutions to the puzzles because then it just adds in that extra level of like come on Come on, how did you not see that it's, a, you know, you gotta take the number of flowers on the rose petal and then multiply it by the number that shows up when the light shines through the blinds, you know? It's not that easy in the moment. But still, I would just, I would love to, especially, you know it's gonna happen with like, boyfriend, girlfriend, like double date kind of stuff going on. Make things like super awkward. Oh, I guess you just spawn that right on top of me and hit me twice. That's cool. It's not like I wanted to deal with the devil to get extra damage or anything. Um, and you know it's gonna happen. And that's, I'm not advocating. Like, I'm not saying that that's a sweet thing that, you know, you're watching like a couple fall apart live. But it would be fun to watch. And then the other thing is like, uh, is it terrible to be a part of? But um, the other thing is, I'm sure in like corporate team building exercises that have misaligned teams, it happens all the time. Please, stay away from me. Um, but anyway, that's all hypothetical, because, like, you know, the, I'm sure the rights management is a problem. Plus, you can't, like, own an escape room and just broadcast your puzzles, you know? Everyone's going to come in and beat your escape room in, like, two minutes. Are we all on, on board with this being, like, one of the strangest runs from, like, a parameter standpoint? You might say it's not that bad, you barely missed the hush fight, but it really, really is that bad. Toothpicks was a huge improvement for us, and that was on the first floor. Um, apart from that, we've been, we've been spinning our wheels for quite some time. And yeah, I mean, did I cost myself some deals with the devil? Sure, but I almost absolved myself of most of the guilt, because we our first deal with the devil was Krampus, we earned it. We got Lump of Coal. Pretty valuable. Second deal with the Devil, we earned. It ended up being a deal with the Angel to give us three Spirit Hearts. Third deal with the Devil, uh, gave us Nun's Habit. Oh, we actually did get a deal with the Angel here. And we got Duality. So it like, actually does nothing for us now. But um, we should have... No, we shouldn't have blown it up to look for Spirit Hearts. Weird. Either way. Um, next deal, deal with the Angel, give us Nun's Habit. That's fine. And then, at that point, we have no... Damage upgrades from three deals, except for Lump of Coal. Um, and as good as Nun's Habit is, it's also very, very who caresy right now. We're already at 12 HP. It's it's like we've got a worse version of the Yum Heart right now. I think I'm going to use Hermit. Okay, we, we got to skip one room to go to a dead end. <laughs> Not the best use of a teleport card, I'm sure, but... And then, on the other hand, we're also, like, unkillable. Or very difficult to kill, at least. 
By the way, if you've never done an escape room, you should. It's it's a it actually is if you got a good communication style and you like the people you're doing it with, it's a good bonding experience because you know every wow did not get hit. Um, everybody, if they're bringing a skill to the table, gets to feel smart. The two times I've done escape rooms, ev there's been like a puzzle for at least like one puzzle per person. I got the arithmetic down. Oh, that was bad. Sometimes you gotta find hidden objects. Kate's like amazing at figuring out where like the false doors are in a room and being like, oh yeah, there's just a key behind here. And we've been trying to like suss out the Enigma machine. See, like it's not really about just being like intellectual on an escape room, you know? It's about being smart. I know it sounds like I said the same thing twice, but you know, when when it's time to mop the floor, you don't go, oh, I'm gonna design a machine that mops the floor and here's how we're gonna get the maximum possible coverage with the minimum moisture, blah blah blah. Unless you actually work at like Dyson or something like that, right? Then maybe you're doing it, but you, you get what I'm saying, you know, so by the time you finish that 10 years down the road, this person's already mopped the floor 20 times. There's a huge practical element to them instead of theoretical, which is, is cool, dude. It's cool. So I actually, like, hate this run and myself right now because I can't pick up the fucking spirit hearts. And without being able to pick up the spirit hearts, we're actually in for a real rough time. Because the spirit hearts are normally great fodder for improving your standing on a run. If you can't take them, we, we can't use that as like fuel to move forward. And you're probably, at least some people are looking at this and going, your, your tears look good. We're in the post-aesthetic era for Isaac. Look at the stats. 3.37 damage is less than Isaac's base damage. We have a slightly better rate of fire. That's it. And lump of coal. Literally, like, you could almost construct the damage of this run out of the starting elements of an Eden run. So, you'll forgive me if I'm if I'm taking a little damage. Um, it's really, really difficult to always dodge shots when you've got, you know, to do it three times longer than you normally do times every single enemy remaining in the game. On the bright side, it's given me a lot of time to talk about escape rooms. Which I'm not like that passionate about, but I like doing them. If, if ever anybody was like, hey, well not anybody. You know, if it was if it was Adolf Hitler and he said, come do an escape room, I'd be like, no. I don't like you. But if it was, uh, you know, someone I was already friends with. Maybe not Malf. No, I would, I'm joking. I think I would do an escape room with anybody. Well, I mean, obviously I would do an escape room with anybody we're friends with. But who would be the best? I don't know. You know, everyone's got their own unique skills. Nick's a creative thinker. It sounds like a backhanded compliment, but I don't... I'm, like, I'm practical to a fault sometimes. And this, uh... Is not always the most useful skill in an escape room. You know, sometimes you gotta solve things visually, which I just, like, am incapable of doing. Uh... Believe it or not, I know you're gonna say, like, Dan. What about Dan? Dan is an actual, like, very smart person. He's just silly. You know, I think people make the mistake of thinking maybe because Dan goes for some lowbrow humor that he's not a genius. But, you know, the dude made, uh, you know, over half a million dollars on national TV for a reason. He didn't just luck into it. Now... Is there much social stuff on an escape room? Yeah! If things go off the... First off, I'm not saying you can't solve the other puzzles, but if things go off the rails, somebody's got to be around there to pull the morale of the team up. And, you know, keep motivating people. It's an important skill, you know? Why do you think, uh, you know, leaders, leadership is something that's valued so highly? Rob is also very, I mean, Austin, mechanically astute, no doubt. Rob, also very clever. 
He's got a, he's got a puzzle solving brain. There's no question about it. He sees novelty in the world. And he sees patterns. I respect that. Malf is the master organizer. He's the master of coin. He's the he's the guy you want running your banks if you live in the medieval era. There's no doubt about it. Everybody brings their own unique thing to the table. Simvicta is welcome to show up as long as part of the puzzle doesn't involve eating any vegetable, then I think he could serve a useful purpose. I hate this run right now. I'm trying to, like, we might as well crunch the numbers in our head. We're going to have four charges at the end of this room. Two hits would bring us down to four HP. We'd go back up to five because of the nun's habit charge. And then, so five HP is our maximum for now. Yeah, that's, I think that's correct. Well, botch that bomb. Botch that the bomb. Botch that the bomb. So this is going to take us 100 years. Now, I, you might think that I'm getting more tired of this run, but the truth is that the next floor is where the magic happens because we get four chests. And there is, I mean, a non-0% chance at the very least that some of these fucking chests will contain... A DPS upgrade. I'm begging you for mercy. Why won't you release me? I'm begging you for mercy. Why won't you release me? The other thing, by the way, that I, I haven't really... I should have drawn more attention to it. I was, was my math? I don't know. Feels like the, using the spacebar item is a lot slower now for some reason. But, um... Oh my god. Okay, well, this is scary. The, what I was going to say, though, is that Depression is actually giving us um, Holy Light shots from time to time. So that's also helping. Although I still am almost doing no damage. So we, we can't get hit twice. What's the game plan? Don't get hit twice. The Isaac fight is actually about, you know, ten times harder when you... Uh, have to endure some of his attacks actually landing like it, 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 it sounds ridiculous what I'm trying to say is if if you don't ever have to deal with him flying around like a weirdo you're fine if you ever have to deal with him flying around like a weirdo and shooting shots with like no telegraph um, then life gets a little harder and that's basically where we're at right now because we actually no matter how fast we attack him we can't uh, Oh, that was very close. We can't make him hit that damage threshold where he starts to do his next attack pattern instead of, uh, you know, flying about. So, oh, I dodged right into it. Just make it. It's really good to fight your boss. One of that runs that sucks so bad. I'm coming from the run of an Isaac. I would just like to be more glad. I don't know why it hinders 2007 one hit wonder. Lips of an angel stuck in my head. Holy shit, it's still like pretty not good, but okay, you know, monstrous on forever alone. Uh, <sighs> Attack fly is nice. I think we gotta get three more items. At the cost of prayer card, which is not insignificant. But we gotta try. So we will not be fighting Mega Satan. And I apologize if you thought that was the logical course of action. I think you are very wrong. But I defend your right to be wrong. Um, so Monstro's Lung is great. Did you see that? Like, he shot across the screen in a manner that is nonsensical to me. Um... I'm, I'm looking at this run like, how do we have a chance here? Anyway, we, we got uh, Concussive Tears, which are... Wh how? That, that doesn't make any sense. They never did that before. Is it Fear Shot? Now, oh, they get so afraid, they're actually superhuman. Either way. We got a decent luck stat. The value there is almost incalculable, but it could also be zero. In my defense, many operations cannot be done on a zero. So, you know. In some ways, I've never been more right, probably. Um, 
Just just keep yourself going strong here. There you go. That's the good stuff. What worries me about this situation? Well, mostly like the 3 HP and the fact that Concussive Tears was by far the best damage upgrade I've had over the course of the entire run. Um, you know, the fact that every room that we come across is full of heinous enemies who just annoy the shit out of me. I didn't walk into that enemy, I walked towards him and then the tractor beam made it impossible for me to escape. Are you kidding me? Who do you think you are? I am, etc, etc. I don't want to lose this run. I also, I mean, I don't want to fall asleep because I miss you, baby. And I don't want to miss a thing. But I mean, I really do want to fall asleep, but I really don't want to lose this run. Because even when I dream of you... Sweetest dreams just uh I never do I still miss your damage and I don't wanna miss a thing Cause if I did it takes me like ten times longer to actually land the kill I don't even miss one shot I don't wanna miss one kill By the way, um Yep, okay It was super not lost on me that we fought like the literal hardest rooms all in a row there, but I think we put down a valiant effort for parts of that. Just not a fun run, honestly. We had some good conversations, so go support your local escape rooms for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.